This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, up to Massachusetts we go. Uh, he's just a short distance from me. When are you going to come see us, by the way? Soon. Soon, yeah. Because I would love to see you in person. You know? Yeah, that'd be great. Get here while we still have the apartment. <laughs> right, 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 right. I don't, I don't, know, don't know what's going to happen with that. But anyway. Right. Mm. Mm. And I have my coffee. That, okay. Yeah. Do you know what I've, I've changed in life? What's that? I never used to put cream in coffee. Why, well, you used to drink it black? Yep. Yeah. And, uh, it, well, I mean sugar, you know, or sweetener. Right. Uh, and uh, that was it. And then one day they got this thing, and it, it said no carbs, you know. Right. And it's a sweetener, and it's, uh, I can't remember the name of it right now. It's a cream. And I bought it, and I put it in there, and it's got all these different flavors like caramel, and uh, I think today I'm doing hazelnut. Right. You know, and it's really good. And I, I suddenly decided I like coffee with cream because it's, it's less like coffee and more like, I don't know, a milkshake or something. Right, 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 exactly. So, Alex, I went fishing. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me, let me just absorb this in my head. Let me imagine you with a rod and reel <laughs> uh, uh, throwing and casting into the... I just, I can't even imagine it. Well, I did it, and I actually caught two fish. Oh, really? Yes. Now, what brought this on, uh, this little desire to go fishing? A friend of mine has a boat, and yeah. he invited me. So I said, sure. Okay, so you went out in a boat. This is ocean fishing. Yes. Yes. Okay. And and uh, he he did you, did you have you ever fished before? Oh yeah, as a kid. Oh, as a kid, you did fish. I fished when I was a kid. Right. I think all kids were required to having have a fishing pole because they looked like the cover of like, you know, Collier's magazine or something. Right. 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 Nobody well, knows. Yeah, my dad loved to fish. Yeah. 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 Okay, so you you went fishing with him. That was a that was a father son bonding. Right, right, exactly. Right, exactly. Did you ever catch anything in those days? Yes. Okay, all right. Yes. I I went fishing. I remember I remember I kept caught some fish, small ones though, never big right. ones, never big ones. So what did you catch in uh, ocean fishing? I caught two bluefish. Really? They're about two feet long. Yeah. And they jump out of the water when you're reeling them in. Well, obviously, you're getting them out of the water, so they don't, you know... No, no, they jump before you get them to the boat. Oh, really? Do they jump into the boat? No. Well, then what good are they? And they have teeth. They have teeth? Yes. Can they bite you? Yes. Were you told this before you caught the bluefish? No. <laughs> Okay. All right. Yeah. And and so, and uh, so you, and did you bring them home? No. No, my friend took care of them. I didn't want them. I'm not going to eat them. Cuz I had a friend of mine who was a fisherman. I mean, he liked fishing. He it was his, you know, was, some of these people who get into fishing are like just nutty about it. Right, 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 right. right. And I, I was I was working a club in Pittsburgh. Yeah. And in Pittsburgh, they have the Andy Warhol Museum. Mm -hmm. So I said to my opening act, do you want to go to the Andy Warhol Museum with me? And he said, no, I'm watching Fishing on TV. Really? He was that much of a fisherman. Wow. So that, I mean, he was as crazed about it. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, anyway, so my friend was so crazed about it, he bought himself a boat. Right. 
and uh, he uh, he used to go out and fish and and catch stuff, but he always caught and released. Right. He never held on to the fish. I I can't remember in all the time this was out like in Fire Island that he ever went out caught fish and brought any back. Really? Yeah, yeah. He just didn't think that was right, you know. To yeah. Do. So the catch and release is a big thing among certain fishermen, not all fishermen. And, and right, right. If, if, you and do, if you bring the stuff home and you eat it, then, you know, it's almost like people go out and hunt. Uh, I go, well, I don't like the idea that you go out and hunt, and then you just cut the deer's head off and put it up on your wall. Right. I mean, if you bring it home and then you have it trimmed and cut up and everything, and then you eat it, what you've killed, right. then I think I, I have to excuse that because you're doing what nature intended, predator right, prey right, relationship. Right, right, right. But if you simply waste that animal because all you want to do is kill it, right? then, you know, I'm sorry. You know, I'm not for hunting at all. And not I, that kind of hunting. Well, I don't need to hunt. I have a supermarket. And they have frozen foods. They have frozen foods. I must admit that, well, like for instance, I can't, you can't go out hunting and kill a cow or a, 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 some beef because it's somebody else's beef that you right, kill. Right, okay. right, right, right. So I wouldn't be able to get anything like that and I hate, I have you ever had venison? Yes. You like it? I had venison, do you remember the big blackout on the East Coast in the 60s? Yeah. I had venison that night. Oh, really? I had, out of the neighbor's house, and I have no idea what it tasted like. Hmm. Because I, I, I've tasted it, and I just don't like game. It's just, it, gamey food is gamey. Uh, uh, right. Uh, uh, I'll tell you a story. You know, when we're kids, certain things affect us, and they affect right. us for the rest of our lives. They're very small events. They're not big events, but they do tone our opinion of things. And the right. one that toned mine was my mother invited this my father invited this friend of his over to dinner okay right. and the friend said don't worry about making dinner I will bring dinner okay right and what he brought is he had gone hunting and he brought back some I guess ducks that he right. had, that he had, had shot and killed right uh, and I thought this is c cool. This is gonna be a lot of fun, you know. Right. And he then he took the uh, gave us the my mother the ducks and she went in and prepared them and cooked them and we're all sitting down to dinner and he goes oh just one morning be careful because you might bite down on a bullet. Right. 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 I couldn't eat it. You right. Know, all of a sudden it became very real what had happened to this duck. <laughs> and I couldn't eat it and right. I have not been able to eat game ever since especially duck right you know. some people like duck I mean I, I just can't get into duck I'm sorry right. I, I don't care I order from a Chinese restaurant and I don't order the duck you know right. what is my watch making noises for oh I get this guy his name is Tony he's one of the callers to the show Right. And Tony is a little out of it, okay? And what he does is he sends me messages on Facebook. Right. Now, every time a message comes in on Facebook, my watch right. goes off. My watch tells time. That's yeah. it. Yeah, well, my watch sends me messages from Facebook. Okay? Right. But he doesn't do just one Facebook message. He does like twenty of them in a row, and so oh, my really? so my wrist is going meep, 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 ding ding ding. Well, that's what you get for being so techno uh, savvy. Well, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to stop him from calling Facebook. You know. Or just block out Facebook uh, messages on your phone. And only do it on the computer. Well, no, because sometimes they get nice messages, and it's fine. You know, it's nice to look right. at your wrist, and somebody says, uh, you know, how are you? Are you okay? Right. You know. I also get uh, email, not email, but uh, uh, text messages on, right. on, my, on my watch. And that's right. fine if somebody just does the one message, and right. I look at it, and I go, oh, that's nice. You know, but then he goes, he he, 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 you know, he, he then 
there's a whole bunch of them, like 20 in a row. Right. And and I, you know, the guy, I like the guy. The guy's not mean or anything. You know, he's not a terrible right. human being. He's just kind of weird. You and know? who isn't? And who isn't? Who are you to judge who's weird? I'm going to tell you, you're not weird like this guy. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. But uh, we're all odd. We're all odd. Odd is not bad. In fact, odd, no. odd is what made us a living. Right. You know? I told you the first time I played uh, Sacramento, I was working with uh, Rick Reynolds. Yeah. And R Reynolds says to me, Kravitz, you're an odd-looking human being. And I took that as a major compliment. Well, then that meant you were going to make it in comedy. He right. well, He wasn't an odd-looking human being, and he didn't do too well. He did well for about a week. About a week. About a week, yeah. He was a flavor of the month. Right. You know, right. and then, all and then I stuff. think he, he made some mistakes. What's he doing now? Selling used cars? I have no idea. You know, a lot of these guys you suddenly see, well, what are they doing? Oh, they're selling real estate. Oh, okay. right. They got out of comedy and they went into real estate. Right. How do you go from comedy to real estate? You know, I guess. Well, you comedy, you're kind of selling yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, uh, what I said was all art is someone putting his madness on display. Right, 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 uh, right. And if he isn't mad and he isn't crazy, then he has nothing to display, and therefore he isn't any good at it. Right, 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 right. You know, I mean, uh, isn't that what you did every time you got up on stage? I certainly had enough madness for everybody. Yeah, you filled the room with madness. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, and I, you look at Van Gogh, I mean, that's he put his madness on display. That's a little severe when he cut off his ear. Well, you know, he was in love with, uh, what's his name? Um, his pal who came to visit him. I'm trying to remember his name now, the other artist. The one that did all the uh, Tahitian women and stuff. Uh, oh, uh, see, there, there goes my mind. Right, I forget right. It. It's over for me. Oh yeah, yeah, it's all fair. You, you, you don't have to make me. Uh, uh, you don't have to put me in the Radio Hall of Fame. I I can't remember where it is. Good night. Uh, okay. <laughs> you. you know. So Alex, so before we got on, you were talking about some other venues you were going to explore. Other venues? Well, no. I've just been thinking about. You know, I think this whole thing with this show is kind of wearing itself thin. It doesn't get right. the list, doesn't get the amount of listeners it used to get, which is reasonable because do you know how many podcasts there are in the world? Oh, millions. About three, four million, yeah. Right. So here I am with my little dog and pony show. Right. And I'm not like, it's, I'm not like uh, oh, NBC and I've got some guy who works for us that does a podcast and we can push it, you know, right. on the air and things like that. It's right. Word, word of mouth has to get out. And, it, and my show is more traditionally a radio show than it is a podcast, you know. Yes, uh, yes. I mean, I did do, uh, uh, what is it, about 67 podcasts of the history of my life. Each one was a half-hour chapter, which people could right. listen to. And that's traditionally what a podcast is. Right, right, right. Uh, and I don't know how many people have listened to that over the time it's been out there, but it's gotten a sizable audience. Sure. Uh, but every night I do an hour and a half, and it's maybe too much for people to have to put up with. Right. You know, uh, when I put you, well, one night I, I decided I wasn't going to run the show because I said some things that I didn't want to get out there. Nothing nothing terrible, but it just right. had to do with our, our, our case with our... Uh, you know our apartment and so on and I, just, right, right, I, right. I didn't want it out there for the record but you were on that show and I didn't want to waste that so I put you up by yourself oh really yeah and that got a massive amount of, of people watching it really yes so well, you know, that's because I'm particularly handsome you're particularly handsome but it's also a short form right you know and so I'm th I, that's one of the things I'm thinking about you know, right. I interview you. I should put it. I then should put it up. You know, I interview right. Bubs. I should put it up. I, right. I interview Pearl. I put it up. Durst. Put it up. Uh, right. Who else? Slayton. I just did right. him recently with Slayton. Just put it up and let right. people go watch those things. 
Right. You know, rather than do this whole show where I get about the same five people, six people every night calling me. Right. Some nights it gets up to 10, 11, you know. Right. Uh, but it's the same people, and, uh, you, you know, it, uh, there's just nothing there to grab anybody. You so know, you so. feel it's run its course? Well, I'm trying to rethink it. Right, right, you know, right, right. I mean, right. I, I do this just to keep doing something, right? Right, right, and, right, 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 right. And somebody, somebody said to me, well, that, it keeps you alive. And I'm going, no, because it's killing me. Good night. <laughs> Good night, Good folks. Night. I'll see you later. You right. Know. But, uh, uh, so, you know, I mean, and also, it's funny, you know, I invented the podcast. Did I ever tell you that? No. I literally, I can lay claim to, uh, to creating the podcast. In fact, I even have the program that was used and made back in 1998. Yeah, 1998. Okay. Uh, what happened was I was out of, the station had fired me. Right. And I had, you know, precious little to do. And I wanted to keep in contact with my audience. Right. And they, I had a website, so they knew I had a website. And they could go to that website. So every day I would do a little half hour ramble about things and about the world and everything. And, sure. then I, and I would put it up on the site and then you could go there and double click on it and listen to it. Right. Well, this guy came to me and he said, Alex... I got an idea. I just built this program. It's called Auto Alex. And people okay. just people just put this on their computer. And every day when you put up a new show, it automatically detects it and then downloads it automatically to their machine so that when they oh, come wow. home, when they come home, there it is. Oh wow. What's that called today? Podcast. Yeah. That's exactly what iTunes does. You know, I did somebody else's podcast, and it was just two guys talking to me. It was basically the same thing that me and you do. Mm-hmm. Except this one was out of Florida. Yeah, yeah. Were they any good? Eh, they were young. Oh, okay. Now, because you tell you, uh, I I keep doing this with you because you tell me you enjoy it. Yes. You know. Absolutely. You know. I look forward to it. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so, I mean, I literally invented the podcast. Uh, the, right. You know, I didn't call it a podcast because there wasn't an iPod out yet. Right. You know, right. so you right. couldn't right. call it a podcast, but I, I we, we called it Auto Alex. That's what we called it. I still have the program on my computer here. If anybody Do you really? Want, if anybody wants me to prove it, it even has a st date stamp <laughs> on it. Wow. But anyway. So and then I one time I wrote into this podcast journal and they were saying so and so invented the podcast. I said no, I did. I was two years. Right. I was two years before that, and they went, right. "No, you didn't." <laughs> okay, you know. But, well, it's, it's all politics. You know that. Yeah, but anyway, I I invented the podcast. Right. Uh, I'm not being Al Gore here, folks. I invented the podcast, and um, uh, now. Here I am. How many, how many people caught the Al Gore reference? Oh, I think some people did, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and then the ones who didn't, fuck them. You know, <laughs> that's the way I feel. Don't right. read a book. And, hey, if you don't know what Collier's Magazine was, fuck it. You know, right. I don't care. Right, you know? right, right, matter. right. It, it's in my wheelhouse of my frame of reference. Do you remember Collier's Magazine? Yes. Yeah, do you remember the Saturday Evening Post? Sure. Of course. Two huge magazines. Right. Right? So Along with Life and Look. Along with Life and Look. Uh, uh, life was the one that lasted the longest, but only right. because when they finally killed it, it died, and then they brought it back a few years later and tried to right. resurrect it. Uh, now, is Rolling Stone still out in paper form or only on the uh, internet? I have no idea. Do you ever see it on? You, well, do are there newsstands anymore? <laughs> you know, no, no, I mean, you're right. I, you know, maybe there are because maybe some people still buy newspapers in the morning. Oh yeah, you know, I, I know a lot of people that still read the Sunday paper. Well, I get the uh, I get the New York Times uh, digital edition. Right. You know, and I buy the weekend paper, but right, you can right, buy it right. separately. But um, 
but anyways, I mean, there were a lot of big magazines, and Life was unique in that it was a picture magazine. It right. was known for its photography. Right. And, exactly. And it had a very special place. It was. It was really. It was photojournalism. Yes, and it was excellent. It was excellent, and I think it was the most popular of all the magazines, wasn't it? Probably because you didn't have to read. They had Time Magazine. Right. Which I think they still publish. They had news, yes, yeah. I see. I see it like at CBS and whatnot. Yeah, Newsweek. Um, I think they still publish Newsweek, but I'm not quite sure. That I'm not sure about. I know they publish Time. Yes. And they still publish People. Well, pe yeah, People still exists, and they right. uh, because otherwise you have to have the most intriguing people of the year. And uh, what is it? Oh yes, uh, the sexiest man alive. Right. You have to have that. Now I don't understand if the sexiest man alive is still alive. And he was right. last year's sexiest man alive. Right. Wouldn't he logically be the still the sexiest man alive? But how come it's a different sexiest man alive every year? And they don't say, well, you know, nobody was better than George Clooney. We'll give it right. to him again. Right. You know. I mean, I saw George Clooney the other day in an interview. And he's like 60 now. He's got a right. beard. Still, look, he's going to look better five days dead than you and I look right now. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. <laughs> me, let, 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 I'll be in the bathroom well, I mean, myself. I mean, come on. This is one of the best looking guys in the world. You know? I mean, it, What do I of, know? What do I know from, from, from good looking? Well, I mean, you know, I, I have had a blessing. And the blessing is I've been ugly. And the horrible thing is if you're beautiful... Beautiful gets ugly. Right. Have you ever noticed that? Yes. You know, how many times do you meet up with a girl that you were hot for in high school and you to go, oh, geez. yeah, what happened? What, yeah, what day did she wake up and say, what the fuck happened to me? Right. Uh, right. Ja right. Jackie Coogan's a beautiful example. Remember Uncle Fester on the, on the Adams family? Yes. Yes. He, at one point, was the cutest kid in the world. He was, Is he, that was right? he was the kid in Charlie Chaplin's The Kid. That's right. And, uh, uh, and, 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 you know, I, when did he wake up, look in the mirror, and go, what the fuck happened to me? Right. I used right. to be the cutest kid in the world, and now I'm Uncle Fester. Well, it could be worse. He could be unemployed. That's that, 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 that too. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But anyway, so, I mean... Uh, I uh, uh, I just always had this feeling that the wonderful thing about being, being ugly is you're going to be that way for the rest of your life. But if you're really good looking, you'll get ugly. You know? Tell me uh, tell me an older an older person who was very big earlier who is hasn't gone to seed to a certain extent. We all do. Right. Yeah. It's so, just it's just Biology, it's, it's what yeah. it is. Yeah, and I mean, I always had character in my face. Well, see, I always thought I was ugly because I grew up in Marin County. And right. I was the oh, only, wow. I was one the of the beautiful people. One of the few Jews at that time living in Marin County. Really? And, and, I, and then before that, I grew up on Telegraph Hill uh, in uh, North Beach. And, right. And it, just compared to the other kids, I was unusual, you know? And I never thought of myself as looking good. I look back at my pictures when I was a young kid and going, hey, he was pretty good looking. But right. he, was, he, was, I was, he was good looking by today's standards, not by the 50s standards. Right, right, you know, right. It right. wasn't until I came to New York that I actually got laid to any appreciable extent because a lot of Jewish women here and a Jewish guy was attractive. Really? Yeah. I have never been with a Jewish woman. Never? No. Oh, you've missed something really good. Really? Now, provided they aren't married to you. Right. <laughs> provided, provided they aren't married. They are singularly, I think, the best fucks you'll ever oh, have. Oh, really? Yes. Hands down. Hands down. All right. You know? Might I mean, be a little late for me to go pursuing. Uh, the, the the way you get them to stop fucking is you marry them. That's the old joke, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 You know. Right. 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 How do you get a Jewish girl to stop fucking you? Marry her. Yeah. Right. 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 You know. Right. But, 
And then they then they become Jewish mothers, and what can we say? You know? Right. But I'm not going to argue with that. I had a Jewish mother, and she ruined me for life. So, you know, I mean... <laughs> Oh boy! Oh God! Yeah, we're we've already done twenty four minutes, and I just they just, they just fly by when I talk to right. you. Right, 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 right. Uh, but uh, we'll do this again next week, okay? Yes, is, absolutely. Is, is that in your wheelhouse? Don't worry, we'll figure out a time uh, after through here with the recording. Right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, playing absolutely nowhere except to his mirror in his house. Uh, there's Steve Kravitz. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Alex. Bye-bye. And Thanks, I, ca- I called you Steve Kravitz this time and not Stephen Pearl. That's right. Because I use the right. word Steve. If I use Stephen, I might have said Pearl. Right. No, actually, it's Steve Pearl, Stephen Kravitz. Oh, okay. Steve Pearl, Stephen Kravitz. Okay. Anyway, Stephen Kravitz, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Alex. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year talk like you've never heard it before and there was steve kravitz we love talking to him oh let me turn on the lights i i'm always forgetting to do something now it's just uh it's it's a thing that happens with me now that i don't forget to, i forget to do stuff but anyway here we go folks see the lights see now i look pretty okay uh let me see here we only got two people waiting to come on here this is this is getting depressing. Well, let me let me put them on. Uh, uh, yeah, let me let me do this. Okay, and uh, here they come. I'll just let them. Uh, oh, and here comes William Ferguson. Okay, admit William Ferguson. All right, uh, and uh, there they are, folks. Uh, oops, I got to get rid of that Stephen Kravitz thing. See, all the I forget to do all these things now. And uh, I'm really, I'm really screwed up, to tell you the honest to God truth. See how it says Steve Kravitz over Allen? Well, uh, we just get rid of that really easily. Poof, it goes away. Okay. Anyway. I feel better. You feel better, <laughs> do you? Oh, okay. And there's Mr. Ferguson. He's in the, uh, he's on the Starship Enterprise. Uh, boy, was that a tacky set, wasn't it? If you look at it by today's standards... Oh, yeah, it was just horrific. Yeah, it was like it was done out of what they call foam core, it looks like. It just, yeah. you know, if you didn't want to touch things too or lean on stuff or just fall apart. <laughs> but they they make the sets better today. Hello, Charlie Wallace. Boy, I'm happy you're here. I guess it uh, must have been a rain out tonight. No, I just had one of those rare days off. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Uh, what, what Charlie does is, uh, uh, for a living, he uh, is a, uh, 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 what, an umpire, right? Or you train umpires? Or are you... I do both. You do both. He's uh, a vampire that trains umpires. He's a vampire that trains umpires. Okay. It's a small part of my income. I live mostly off my pension and Social Security. Of course, as do we all. Uh, or I do at least. Hello, Vernon Nunn. Nice to see you too, Vernon. Good. To I'm see back you. home. But you're back home. Okay, fine. No place like home. So I get, you know, I get these trolls that write stuff that, that you know, I it, it, this may well be true. Okay, uh, but you don't have to write it. That's just mean. Okay. So, oh, did I miss something? Do I have some some new? Uh... No, no, it has nothing to do with you, you egotistical <laughs> son of a bitch. Sometimes it has to do with me, the other egotistical son of a bitch. <clears throat> it's from <laughs> Arthur Viken, or Viken, Vilken. I guess that's how he pronounces his name. Dreadful. This is what this was referring to last night's show. Uh, this is what the death throes of a gr- once great radio show looks like. Oh. And Ow. it ain't pretty. Ouch. Down to four people, only three of whom say anything, and those who talk, only one should. Uh, I've been a big fan of Alex's for more years than I'd like to admit. He deserves to be in the Radio Hall of Fame. He doesn't deserve this. 
There was something like that on Facebook posted for you. Yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah. okay. I thought this was side chat. No, no, this isn't side oh, okay. chat. Um, so how much validity is there in, in what that person just wrote? Absolutely not at all. None. You don't think uh, so? No. Oh, well, look at this. I mean, we only have like what here, five people. I guess it's early. Well, quality it, over it's quality. Early. Last night we only had like about four people, so right. you know the important ones were here except Charlie was missing. Yeah, believe me, I would rather have been here. Well, yeah, I would imagine. Uh, by the way, out in Texas, a little headline just came through. Mm -hmm. uh, a federal appeals court upheld a Texas law banning an abortion method commonly used by doctors for ending second trimester pregnancies. Yep. Uh, is that going to hold up, or does this now go to the Supreme Court? Oh, it now goes to the Supreme Court. Yeah. And with this court. Huh? With, with this court, it could well hold up. Yeah. yeah. Now, my question is, uh, how many trimesters should we allow things to go before we... Forever. Do you think so? Nobody has the right to use anybody's body without their consent. All right, but let's say we're in the third trimester. Okay, if you haven't made, wait a minute, if you, if you haven't made up your mind by then. Well, that's called birth. Well, no, the third, end of the third trimester is birth, not okay, the beginning. Okay, I need your kidney. Hmm? I don't need your consent for it. I'm just going to take it. I'm going to die if I don't get your kidney. So I get to take it whether you want me well, wait, to. Wait, what not. does that have to do with abortion? I don't understand. Explain it. A woman's uterus is an organ, just like your kidney. Nobody yeah, gets to use it without her consent. But yeah, but you're, 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 I don't know. I just no, I I have a I have a, I have a question when we get to the third trimester, uh, that if you know I mean okay, it's the day before the baby's going to be born. Do we kill it? I'm not saying kill it. Huh? So take it out of the woman if she doesn't want it there. If you can save its life after taking it out of the woman, go for See, it. See, I my argument is if the if the fetus can exist uh, without uh, uh, without the aid of the mother, which would be about what seven months, something like that. You could remove. I was the, born three months early, so I, I yeah. was born uh, September, uh, and I was supposed to be born December. I yeah. have a niece that was. Six, there was three months premature. Yeah, uh, but you see, if you're premature, it's a different, it's a different kind of story here. Uh, but what I'm saying is, is that that I just, I just wonder what the, what the proper thing is. I mean, um, well, the proper thing is the 13th Amendment says you cannot be forced into servitude involuntarily. All right, but wouldn't you think that after six months? Somebody should know whether they want that kid or not. Okay. You know, well, I'm a look. I'm all. For, I'm all for. I'm all for. I am all for abortion, and I say I'm for abortion because I like to use the most violent term I can because it pisses off the right wingers. Uh, but I, I'm. I am for abortion. But the question is, after a certain point, I question whether you shouldn't have made up your mind already. But there are a lot of reasons why, besides not making it, there's a lot of women, most of the, in fact, almost 100% of the women that have third trimester abortions wanted that kid. There's some other reason. That woman's going to die. Or oh, that well, now that's a different story, but that's a different oh, yeah. story. The kid has the only ones, name me a woman who all of a sudden, after six months of puking her guts out, she's going to go, oh, I don't want this kid after all. Uh, I, I seriously doubt if any rational woman would come up with that. But yeah, there'd have to be some extraordinary circumstances as to why you'd want to abort that late in the game. If you yeah. need to abort because you your life your, your, your yeah. life is at, at, in danger, then uh, I'm, I'm all for it. All right? Sure. I, in fact, I'd perform the procedure myself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. The Texas law doesn't allow for that. The poor woman's just gonna have to fucking die. Yeah. Sounds like Ireland. Hmm. Hmm. Well, Which, I, that has happened, by the way. What? In Ireland, there was a woman. It, it, she had to have an abortion. They had to get it out of her, or she was gonna die. And the doctors just said, "No, we can't do this." So they let her die. She died. Hmm. 
Well, I think that if we're going to if we're going to uh, uh, make a decision between a already sentient life and one that isn't sentient in quite the same way, uh, I say we go with the person who's alive right now. Yes. Okay. Um, if you can, you know, if if it's a, the mother's in danger and you can take that child out three months early, then I say go ahead. You know, but I I just say that any other time, that it is the mother has the right to make the the decision. But to say that they won't allow it in the second trimester or a procedure. Now this is about a procedure. Yeah, particular procedure. Yeah. What is that procedure? Do you know, Charlie, at all? I don't remember. I haven't read it, you know, in months. Yeah. Let's ask Donald Trump. He knows everything. Yeah. Well, no. It's let's you know. Don't even bring his name up. You know, it'd be dilate and evacuate, huh? It would be dilate and evacuate. Yeah, it would, a, DN, D, uh, a DNC, which is the National Democratic DNC. Party, the DNC. Uh, no, it was called a DNC, a dilation and curatage, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah. Um, Makes it better if it's in French, I guess. Well, that's uh, what they used to do. Uh, before abortions were legal, they said the woman yeah. needed a DNC, she for her own health, you know, and so they weren't exactly boarding the child. But whoops, by accident, we aborted the pregnancy, you know. Uh oh. <laughs> the trouble with it was in the old days, if you wanted an abortion and you had money, you could get an abortion. You know, anybody could get an abortion and a good one with a good doctor. Yeah. Right, and if you didn't have the money, uh, you got an abortion in a back alley somewhere and took your life in your hands. Yes, Vernon. This goes uh, to the point. Yeah, that uh, many of us have been talking about the mindset of the current Republicans or supposed conservatives. Okay, mm -hmm. they know they know that this is going to have a more more of an impact on poor people than yep. wealthy people. Of course. And the Republican Party doesn't give a shit about poor people. No. But you see also all those Republicans, let's say they make abortion illegal again. Those Republicans will be able to afford it somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. You know. Uh, I mean they can fly to they can fly to Europe. Or get Canada. one there. They can go up to Canada, do it there. Uh, but the poor person doesn't have the doesn't have the wherewithal, the money, or the uh, where or the uh, uh, ability financial to, they don't financial, have the financial ability to even get out of town. Well, no. that's what I, this is what I always say when Roe v. Wade was passed that it didn't it wasn't the beginning of everybody was going to run out and get an abortion. It was the end of women were were going to stop dying from this. Yeah. Well, I mean, all these people who are anti-abortion don't remember what it was like when it was illegal in this country. Oh, and the God, num yeah. And the number of women who were literally mutilated as a result. I remember when I was 19, my 17-year-old girlfriend got pregnant. Oh. And we didn't know what to do about it. Uh, and in those days, abortion wasn't a legal option. It was an illegal option. And we checked into that, but it was something we completely threw out in our minds because it was too it was dangerous. You know, I'm sure that had legalized abortion existed at the time, we would have done it just like that. And neither of our lives would have been inalterably changed as a result of it. She had the kid and gave it up for adoption. Uh, I wanted the kid, but I and I said I I'll take it, and they said you can't. You know she has the rights to do with it whatever she wants to, um, and so consequently I never saw a child that was I th at least a, it was, I was accused of it being mine, uh, and uh, it has affected me pretty much for all of my life. That's why I haven't had any kids. I was going to ask, how do you feel about that? Well, I remember when it was happening, it was one of the most terrifying experiences of my life. I mean, both of us were two kids. Uh, I just turned 19, she just, she was almost 18. And we were scared out of our minds. We didn't know what to do. 
And when she finally told her parents that she was pregnant, that was the last I was able to see of her. Oh. Okay. And then she decided she was going to give the kid up for adoption, which in those days was a completely blind adoption in which uh, it went into, you know, they, they, you cannot, could not find records. I don't think to this day I'd be able to find the records of where that child was placed. Okay. And the only reason I know it was a boy is after she had the baby, I went to her doctor to talk to him about the fact that I, you know, I really would like to adopt the child. I would like to have, since it's my child and she doesn't want it, shouldn't I have the right to have it? And he informed me, no, you have no right in the matter. And then he walked out of the room for a couple of minutes and I have this amazing ability to read upside down. And I looked at the piece of paper he was looking at and I found out it was a boy. Oh, wow. Okay. And that's all I know about the child. Okay. Uh, this woman came back into my life later on and I, you know, because she got a hold of me, she heard that I was on radio and, hey, this is, her name is Sandy. Uh, this is Sandy, remember me? And I wrote her back and I said, how can I forget you? You changed my life, you know? Yeah. And she said, I can't see how. Well, I'm trying to figure out what's, what's going on here. So I didn't want to like say, hey, you had a kid by me. Because yeah. I didn't know that maybe in her mind she had bl she had blanked that out. Holy shit. Okay. And I didn't want to raise it up until unless she wanted yeah, to bring it up herself. Right. And there was never a mention of that. And I kept telling her, I kept passing little hints to her that, you know, she could say something to me about it, whatever. And she never took the bait. And these were all in emails. Uh, and uh, I um, eventually I gave up on the whole thing but she did at one point tell me that she did have a son uh, shortly uh, after I knew her a couple of years later I think she put it and uh, then she described the kid to me and that he has all kinds of problems he's neurotic he's this he's that and I went sure sounds like my kid <laughs> you know, it really sounded like He's she really actually awesome. kept the kid. Oh, you and, think she kept the kid? Well, she that she did. She and, might have, you know? Did you ever yeah. find out which, like, did never, she disappear? I never got a resolution to any of that. She might have kept him. I, I stopped uh, writing back to her because I just, I was I was tired of, you know, I mean, I, I threw enough hints out there and enough uh, uh, bait that she could take the bait and talk about it, you know? And she didn't. And I, again, I didn't want to bring it up because maybe in her mind she blanked it out or something like that. And I didn't want to bring up an unpleasant uh, memory of hers. So- Can I bring something up, Alex? Yeah. Let's say your son wanted to actually meet you. How would you feel about that today? Well, Howard Stern wants to come and see me. He can. <laughs> Oh my God! That would make sense. He's taller than you, though. Right? You're pretty tall, though, Alex. Because you're over six feet tall. Yeah, but um, no, he's uh, he's uh, about he's a tall. year about a year too old to be my my but son. Would you would you be up to seeing like a child like that? Was your safety safety well, child? Well, I at one point I was going to hire a a detective. I had a good detective that I knew. To go find my kid. Just to see how he's how yeah. he Yeah, and I decided not to. And the reason I decided not to is that I thought of myself as, let's say, being that kid, and all of a sudden there's a knock on my door, and the door opens up, and I go, hey, I'm your dad, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that's a pretty shocking thing. Yeah, I'd be so my, a my, my, my attitude became... If he wants to find me, I'll make myself very available. Oh. But if he doesn't want to find me, I'm going to leave it up to him. Okay. I don't think he was ever told. He may not have ever been told. We don't know. Huh? You know, I don't know what the story is. You know, but I do know that. Uh, oh hell, he would be. Uh, phew, God, he'd be. Uh, he'd be. 
He'd be 60 now. He'd be 60, 60, 60 61, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, uh, uh, you know, it's always, but it, 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 it remained a very kind of important part of my life and a part of my life that I've never been able to have a, uh, an end to, okay? And it's one of the reasons I never had a kid because I, I had one uh, and it was taken away from me. And I would only have a child by a woman who I trusted. Well, the uh, pendulum swung so far the other way now, even rapists have the right to visitation rights to their kids. I didn't know that, but yeah, you know, they do. Yeah. In states, they do. You know, I mean, uh, yeah, but uh, but then I had I had no rights at all. I mean, you know, they keep they keep talking about men's rights and how men have it over women and women don't have any rights at all, and you, you couldn't prove it by me in that situation, you know, because I really had no rights at all, you know, so I mean. Um, uh, there was nothing I could do in order to uh, be uh, uh, to have any kind of rights over that child and I mean she didn't want it so why shouldn't I get it right and today you should have had rights at that your rights should have kicked in at that, the minute that child was born though I know but but in those days it, it didn't did. kick in you had no rights today that would be different Today, yeah, would that would lot. be much. Oh, yeah, that would be much different. It would be absolutely different. If she didn't want the kid, I'd be able to raise the kid on my and own. You'd, and you'd have been on hook for child support for the next eighteen years. Well, probably, but I wouldn't mind that if it was my right. child and I was able to see that child and be a father to that child. Uh, I would be happy to pay my part of the child support because she should also have to pay part of it too under current thinking, right? <clears throat> Yeah, uh, you know, uh, but uh, I, you know, it it, it it really set something for me for the rest of my life. I mean, it set a mindset for me, and I never had any kids because of it, you know. But hello, Brian Neary, how are you? Uh, hi, Dad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brian. Uh, well, if uh, I could only Outside. help you were my son, because I'd be very proud of you. Yeah, but I would have told you many years ago instead of. Yeah, uh, yeah. But you, but you know what that would mean. Well, I always, keep, no I always keep waiting for that phone to ring or that knock on my door, and it's some guy saying I'm your son. You know, uh, but I don't know if he could find out. Mm. You know, back in oh. those days, they erased the trail. Yeah. You know, it was bl it was what they call blind adoption, and somebody mm -hmm. would adopt the kid. That's it. Yes, Alan. So how about, have you done one of these 23 and Me? Probably not, but um, uh, DNA kits and to find out your ancestry or who yes, you... Yes, yes, we did. Okay, well, if he's done one in their, in their computer, it may match you up. Well, and he may uh, be able uh, to uh, find uh, you. To begin with, I have not had that information sent to me, okay? Uh, and secondly... Uh, it has happened to somebody I know. Ronnie, my ex-wife, who is now since deceased, towards the very end of her life, got a call. From, uh, she, she was on like Ancestry.com. And all of a sudden, she gets this letter, I think it was, from somebody saying, I'm your son. She had had a child when she was younger, when she was about my age at that time. Um, and she gave it up for adoption, a blind adoption too, and it went out there. And the kid went out searching for his mother and didn't know where to find her. And then he linked into Ancestry.com and turned out that Ronnie was his mother. And so she met him and met the, her, her great-grandchild, or, you know, her grandson, rather. It uh, recently happened to a friend of mine, and that's how yeah, I know about this. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm familiar with that happening. It hasn't happened to me. Oh, I'm just waiting for that. All, all I know there. about my Ancestry.com file is that it's probably in China somewhere right now, you know. <laughs> so, because they have been accused of that. It's right next to your uh, 2021 award. 
it yes, can't be yes, found. right. Now it's day number three since they were supposed to announce it and they haven't yeah, announced well, it yet. You know. Well, I haven't done the I haven't done the ancestry DNA, but I do have an ancestry uh, account. Mm -hmm. And one of the more interesting things that I discovered about my descendants mm -hmm. is that my fifth great grandmother on my father's side mm -hmm. was Daniel Boone's older sister. Oh, really? <laughs> Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Chloe Boone. Really? Well, I haven't happen. done it because I'm afraid that the police would find me. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, I, we did it. Marjorie did it actually for me. And it turned out n n nothing much. And I haven't gotten any things from them lately. So apparently my subscription or something has run out. Because what happens <clears> is... <throat> When you sign on to Ancestry.com, what a racket that is. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. You, have yeah. you done it, Charlie? Yeah. Then you know what I'm talking about. You think you're going to get this thing about, you know, you're, you're where you... And if they simply send you a map of where you might have been from. Right? Where were you from, Charlie, did they say? Well, I, actually, it's a really kind of funny because my parents met in Chicago. Yeah. It turns out that their great great grandparents are from the same town in Tennessee. They didn't even know that. <laughs> okay, but they, but but when they say like where your ancestry is from, did it show any place in the world? Was there any African lineage? Well, they didn't go back that far. They went back to 1804. I found out that we had relatives that came over from Africa in 1804. Yeah. Okay. Because mine my kid, mine said I I said guess what. You're uh, you're uh, from this part of Europe, you know, uh -huh. and it was Germany. I know that, okay, uh, or Russia. I can't remember where it was exactly, but it was in that area. And it said you're Jewish. And I went, okay, <laughs> fine. You know, thank. Tell for f seventy-five bucks. Tell me something I don't know, okay? <laughs> you know, I, you can tell I was Jewish just by the size of my nose for crying out loud. You know, and Schwartzman, right? And, and Schwartzman, I think that's oh that's a pretty good hint. And that sounds German or Russian. That's, so, that's a yeah, good that way. was a good guess. Yeah, yeah, that's a good solid Irish name there, Schwartzman. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh Schwartzman, yeah. Uh, oh. So, so I mean, uh, so I get that. And then all of a sudden, I keep getting stuff like, well, would you like to know more about yourself? Yeah. It's another hundred bucks. What? Fuck yeah, you. Just... Or it's like twenty four ninety five a month, I think, if you want to find out more. Oh, what? You're going to tell me I'm Jewish and I was bar mitzvahed? You know, come on. Oh, they, they and on what you, day? <laughs> for the $24 a month, in two years, you get your foreskin back. Yeah, right. <laughs> Kind of but but it oh. did it did pay off for Ronnie because she did find her son. That that worked out. Good. You know, uh, Unfortunately, and she went. It was she the went. End of her life. Well, well, she yeah, but she was she well, you know something. She was happy that it happened at the end of her life because it kind of put a period on some part of her life. You closure. Know? Uh, you know, closure. Uh, and and she met her uh, her her uh, uh, her son. Uh, and uh, it was it was interesting. She wasn't it wasn't wonderful. She wasn't. I think she wasn't that crazy about his politics, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> but uh, uh, but it was it was a good thing for her. Uh, but it came to her. She didn't go out looking for it. You know, and uh, if if he if if the knock came at the door, the phone call came, or email came and it said uh, hey i'm your son how are you uh, and it was matt gates it, well if it was matt gates i wouldn't answer it okay <laughs> but, but but alex it, it, i know you say you know you wish you would have had the kid or seen the kid or something or been in the kid's life but you wouldn't have had the career that you had uh i mean i mean i i love i love kids i love kids i love my kids <laughs> but 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 for you, and if you're a single father, or even if you guys were together still, I mean, Charlie attests to it. I mean, you know, everybody who's had kids know. I mean, it, it's it's a 24-7 job. So. Yeah, but you know something? You would have probably turned out exactly the same way you turned out because you waited till you were about, what, 50, oh, yeah. 50 to have your first kid? 
48. 48. See, so so yeah. your career was pretty much set in stone. You know? And I had my fun days and years and decades. Of course. <laughs> so, of course. And I used to listen to Alex Bennett all the time, who always said, don't have kids. <laughs> who? Who? Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel well, my, I, I would agree with you that if I had had kids, I might not have had the career that I had. Because what happens is the decisions you make in life are different. I mean, many right. times I just said to an, a, a station owner, fuck you, I'm leaving. Right, and yep. I didn't have anybody to worry about but myself, and in some cases a wife. But you know, we we could tough it out. If I had kids, I might not, not have much. done that, or I might not have taken that job somewhere and taken a chance on it. You know, yeah. so yeah, and my and career me, my career was made by having flexibility. Yeah, and for me, it was my my real father. He had like seven kids with like four different wives, so. You know, for me, I wanted to end the cycle, and I knew I was having too much fun, and I knew I, I, I didn't want to be like him, so that's why I waited. Well, you know, I mean, there was a point in my life where I thought maybe I would like to have a kid. I even put a thing out on the air, this was in San Francisco, that I would like to have a kid. Is there any woman out there who wants to have one by me? Oh, good Lord. Uh, you, you know, and but, but... Were they beating down the door? Huh? Were they beating I got, down the door? I, I got quite a few, uh, quite a few that, takers it, uh, on it. You know, uh, where was this at? Where you did this? San Francisco. Yeah. Oh, so the lesbian organization knocked on. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, but uh, it, uh, you know, I mean, hey, that wouldn't have been a bad idea. Find a lesbian who wants to have a kid. Yeah. You know, yeah. I can be the sperm donor. Win win. You know, all I would want is that I had it would have equal custody of the child. That was my. You know, uh, and uh, and uh, if you want to marry me, that's not necessarily an option. You know, so, you just want to have a kid. Yeah, yeah. Something you can talk to and look at and say, "This is mine." Well, it, I don't even want to say it's mine. I just, you know, I just, I want it, one of the things I wanted to perpetuate that when I die disappears, the Schwarzman name dies, mm -hmm. the yeah, way it's sure. spelled and everything, which is S C H W A R Z M A N N. There's some, you know, S C H W A R T Z M A N's out there, but not spelled like we spell it. I don't have any, how many ways is there to spell that name, though? Well, there there is a Schwartzman with a T and one N is usually more common than a, no more, just no T and and two N's. So the name I don't know of anybody else who has the <laughs> same name. I've I've looked it up, and you'll find Schwartzman, but you won't so, find Schwartzman. So you wanted someone to carry on your last name or not carry it on? Carry on the family name and the, the family on. legacy and the family uh, uh, DNA. You I'm know, in the same it, boat right now as you, Alex. Huh? I'm in the same boat as you. Really? I'm, yeah, I'm I'm the last Ferguson. Really? Yeah. You, there aren't other Fergusons around. Not in my line, no. Oh, not in your line. You're talking about your DNA line. Yeah. yeah. It, it, when I go, you know. So you haven't had any kids? I got close once. Yeah. She well, it clo it's close, but it's no cigar. Well, okay. she was alive for about 18 weeks. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. That's so. That's really sad. Yeah. Yeah. But. And, uh, and, and like you, that. That profoundly affected me in, in a lot of ways. Oh, I'm sure it did. You know, um, uh, because you probably became quite fond of it, of the child. You know, and uh, but that that, that kind of that, oh, that's sad. That's sad. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring. No, the that's part okay. Here. Yeah, you really took the show down. No, no, Thank no, you. No, I was no, having no. a good show till you told us no, that No, William, I can sympathize because something similar happened to me. What, what was that? Our firstborn lived eight days in intensive care before she died. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, that's rough. Yeah, well, our first pregnancy was, turned out to be ectopic, and so never even made it to birth. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, oh, it's, oh, but Vernon, you then went on to have children, right? More children? No, we adopted. You adopted. We, we tried a second. We tried a second time, and we had problems with the second pregnancy as well. Yeah. And uh, that second child ended up being stillborn. Oh boy. 
<clears throat> so we adopted uh, both our kids are are adopted yeah yeah but uh, good kids oh they're wonderful oh, okay so that's yeah. all that matters you know yeah. and and uh, uh, you know people say well gee they weren't your own kids and whatever but you know I got to tell you um, if they if you're if you're the father to them then that's all that matters you're the father the only thing I'll say is that neither one of them now has a uh, any prospects of creating grandchildren for my wife. Yeah, she, she wants grandchildren. Why don't they? They don't have, well, my, my daughter's not dating anyone right now. Yeah. And my son is dating that someone help. that he's only known for four months. Yeah, but that doesn't well, mean that... seven then... years old, Vernon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think my son is definitely in love, and that it could lead to something. Oh, but, okay. Uh, well, right now, my daughter is not dating anyone, so yeah, well, that would kind of, that would kind of help, you know. I mean, wor worse <laughs> than that is hopefully they're not Trump supporters. Oh no, yeah. no absolutely way. not. <laughs> okay, good. Absolutely, you do not. care for him. Okay, well, my mother always put a pressure on me. Really? Uh, yeah, she went. I'm yeah, never gonna. Yeah. Am I ever gonna be a grandmother? Oh. Am I ever gonna be a grandmother? Am God I bless gonna... Jewish mothers. Yes, God and bless. I'm going, Mom. Oh, I don't know, you know about that. I'll decide you. whether I want you to be a grandmother or I not. Don't know about that. You know, my mother's 88. She's Jewish and she's a pain in the ass. <laughs> The uh, same and everybody's thing. like, no, oh, she's only you know going to be around a few more years. I've been hearing that for thirty years now. Well, and if, if, if <laughs> saying, mom, you know, if you're out say, there, saying I love you. you're only going to be around for a few years, and that's why you should be a grandmother. Is like me saying I'm only going to be around for a few years. That's why I should get uh, my nom my uh, induction into the Hall yeah. of Fame. You know, are, are you up for that? Huh? I mean, I love I love my friend? mother. Yeah. I love my mother. Mm -hmm. We get along fine. Yeah. But yeah, she's in later years. She's becoming a pain in the rear. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, you know, they all will eventually. Absolutely. Yeah. I so think it happened about age eighty. My father was never a pain in the ass. My mother was a pain in the ass. Yeah. It, it, that's it, why she. Happened. That's why she doesn't get a tombstone. Okay. <laughs> so when are you going to give me grandchildren? Yeah, when are you going to give me grandchildren? Shut up, Mom. Shut up. You know. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm not even Jewish, folks. Yeah, but, you know, you don't have to be Jewish to have a mother who nags. You know. Uh, oh, where's, uh, speaking of Jewish, where's... Uh, uh, Jeff. Jeff? Oh, Jeff. Jeff. Yeah, you know, he had tested... I guess tested negative later. I don't, you know, yeah, I, yeah, I two, two he was going up to Massachusetts, wasn't he? Well, he was okay. going to, but then he came down. He po test, it tested positive for for uh, COVID, oh. and then then wait a minute, and then he went back and retested, and he came out negative. So they tested him again to make sure, and he tested negative again. <clears throat> so that's why he didn't go up to Massachusetts. But you know. Maybe he went, you know, so, uh, but I hope nothing, I hope he didn't come down with COVID, you know. Uh, One thing I heard on the news tonight is that there, uh, some doctors are stressing monoclonal antibody therapy for people, uh, even if they come down with COVID, yeah, well, if you that's take what that treatment that, soon enough, it will keep you from going to the hospital. That's what they did with your governor. Uh, Charlie, yeah, they gave them that mod, what's it called? Monoclonal, monoclonal, monoclonal antibody. antibodies, antibodies, and um, anybody want an antibody? <laughs> um, uh, he, uh, uh, but it, 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 it's a, supposedly it's very hard to get and expensive. Yeah, that's right. Yep, both. Yeah. Well, I heard tonight that it's not that ex it is expensive, but the government picks up the cost. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. They do if you're going yeah. to Texas anyway. Well, they said they're giving it to some people, and a lot. That's the reason we aren't having the deaths that we're, we usually would have off of something like this. So, you know, it's we're not having the deaths because people were wearing masks and people got vaccinated. I'm not wearing my mask. But you got the shot. Yeah, I wear the get mask indoors. 
That's the latest thing, okay? Well, okay. it's time now to go get the third shot. We knew I'm signing up next happen. month. So huh? what? I'm going to sign up next month. Well, I'm I'm not going to sign. Well, my mine I will not be eligible for it till the 28th of uh, October. Yeah. So Vernon, you want to make sure you go by the science, and the science says that it starts going down about eight months. You know, start way, losing antibodies. I want to show. Yeah, well, I got uh, my first shot in January, so yeah. oh wow, I'll be getting mine in September. You know, I wow. made, I got well, my, I got my my second one in February. My so first shot go. I got in January, and then I got the second one at the end of February. But well, here's they the say thing. the eight months is usually from your first. No, shot. it's from the second. From the second one. Second. Which yeah, actually which two weeks that? after the second one. Yeah, and while yeah. I'm there, I'm going to get a fourth one just to be on the safe side. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you tell me I saw, Maybe you could save them up and sell them on eBay. I want to show you how stupid, how absolutely stupid the press is. So they're holding this press conference today with the CDC. Uh, and uh, it, it, they put it out to questions from the press. And somebody in the press says, well, why haven't you stated that the preference of people to be able to get their third shot, their, their booster shot, uh, which should be a priority with people who are older. Does anybody understand why that was a stupid question? Yes, Charlie, I will take an answer from Charlie. People who got the shots were older. Yes! The people who got all their shots initially were older. Yeah, and that's and why the were, numbers and, are a lot and, lower for older folks. And they were given preference over anybody else, okay? But this guy from the press asked the question, well, why aren't you making it, uh, 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 you know, so that uh, older people get it first? Well, because older people are going to get it first, <laughs> you know? I mean, just if, if you go by the eight-month rule, mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's ridiculous. You know, what vaccine is that? You got to wait eight months for. Oh, that's the new the booster now. Booster. Oh, okay. Saying, now William you're saying doesn't, they're saying you don't that get your the news up antibodies there start city, diminishing. You? Yeah, now you had COVID. Yeah. And uh, you didn't get a shot till when? Just recently, right? Last week. Last week. So you have got eight months. See that. And you've got eight months. This is my good. first. This is my first jab with the Moderna. I get the second one on September 11th. Okay, so it would be eight I, months. It'd be eight months from that day that you get your booster. The reason so, is, and I would say what's interesting is that probably the Moderna you're going to get now as your second shot may have the the uh, Delta virus taken into consideration. It may, but the fact of the matter is that because you got it this late, I mean the reason he didn't get it is quite frankly, he almost died of uh, COVID. COVID. Uh, so they waited nine months before they gave you a shot. That's the, that's the medical timing usually. After you get over COVID, they usually wait about nine months or eight months before you can get the vaccine. Why is that? Is that? Well, they didn't at the, at the time. They didn't have vaccines for me. No, I, under, no, I understand. No, no, no. That. We're talking about after you had it. After, oh, how long has it been? Almost oh, a little over a year. Oh, okay. Well, they're they're saying now, uh, some study in Israel said that people that have had uh, COVID need to wait about eight or nine months before they forget get a about shot. forget about what they found out in Israel. <laughs> Remember what we were saying about Jewish mothers earlier? Oh yeah. Okay. Case closed. Well, I know people okay. that had it. Got the shot six months after they had COVID. Yeah, I mean, I had COVID. I got a, a month later. Uh, Texas is in always in the rear. Well, well uh, 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 I don't uh, know. Tony had know. Tony had COVID. Are, yeah, are you sure? COVID. Are you sure you had COVID, Tony? <laughs> no, I had it. I, I I had it when my mom got it. We we waited a week and we tested. And I got I actually saved my paperwork from the did CDMD. You get, did you get sick and everything? And if you remember when I called you, uh, I'll be honest. I now that I you know when I had it I was tired like I'll tell you like yeah, last night I was some days like night I get tired Alex I fall asleep but like some days I feel like a little more tired like last night I was listening to these on the radio mm -hmm. on the Alexa thing and I some nights I get a little tired I thought maybe it was heat but I think since it was nothing drastic I had fine breathing but I noticed since I've recovered from it it could have been losing my mom and all but I also felt when I did have COVID 
Mm-hmm. I was a little tired at night and I had the sweats. I had no problems breathing. I was just like in the afternoon, I was getting more drowsy. Like I would never get tired like a three oh, or four. Oh, you got lucky, man. Yeah, I never had any breathing issues like you had. I just had like the, did you have night sweats? Like your shirt was kind of like sweaty, like a cold. He, I had was, a, he was in a coma, okay? Oh, no. oh, well, Dill, I mean, normally, I get that normally now. I mean, I, in, I, I like have the windows open, the fans going, you know, and I sweat at night. Okay. And you didn't yeah. sweat at night before you had COVID? No, I, it, that, that, that was normal. Oh, okay. That's pretty much, yeah. I was so so for like two days. It was nothing like that at all. No problems. Breathing. I was doing the laundry, still going up and down the stairs. I mean, I wasn't, I was a little, I was tired. Like now I feel I'm a little tired tonight, but it could be just me running around a little back and forth in the post office with the heat. But last night I was a little tired, but I was never like that. You know, like I couldn't, I never had a breathing issue. I had, I remember calling the show that time. I remember was when I tested, I had a, I asked, I remember one day I said, Alex, I'm going to sign off because I was a little tired because I had like the cough going still in the nose. Mm-hmm. But, you, you know, and you know what I felt, too, still to this day? I'm not going to lie to you. I was scared when I got tested positive. Because you're laying in bed and you're saying to yourself, oh, God, can I? I was practicing breathing. And it was <laughs> and I was watching my mom at the time because she was still home. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm yeah. saying to myself, oh, shit, when is this going to take a turn for the worst? It was it, your mind plays tricks on you. Then. Did your mother die that. of COVID? Did they determine yeah, that? Yeah, she died of COVID. They yeah. listed that as the cause of death. Cause of death, yeah. Complications from COVID. Yeah, com- yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah according yeah, to Marjorie yeah. Taylor Greene, all old people die of COVID. All old people die of COVID. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Boy, well, doctors, or, or doctors, doctors make yeah, money. Yeah, they make money by, by yeah, putting if COVID. That was, as the cause if that of, yeah. was true, I'm hoping that she's at least seventy years old tomorrow. <laughs> well, I I don't know that I didn't maybe didn't have COVID. You could have had COVID out because I'm, I'm tired. Because uh, right now I'm still I'm tired all the time. You know, like Alex, I'm my mother's old girlfriend from work. Well, you're she, not uh, for me anymore, Alex. Huh? You never knew she had it. What? Who who asked me a question? Somebody. Somebody asked me something. I love the way Charlie points to me. Uh, <laughs> I, I said you're not for uh, me anymore. Alex. Alex is over there for me. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. Well, I'm in between you and Alex, so. Um, I, you're not 40 anymore. You're going to get tired as you get older, I think. Yeah, I think I, so. Yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. I, you get a little old, Alex? <laughs> what? You get a little old, Alex? <laughs> but you used to store your packages for days before you would touch them. You were more careful than anybody. Oh, 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 we were, we were. We, listen, I, when Mar- Marjorie would come in the house, me. I'd spray her with antibiotics. I don't blame you. Yeah. I wouldn't want to know. That's right. You guys went through a lot of Lysol. Yeah. But Sprays, I mean, once, she, once she was oh, home, once, once she didn't have to go to work anymore, I don't think we ever left the house. Once in a while, she would go down to the store, down to the supermarket, wearing a mask. She would wear gloves. We were wearing gloves. And then she would come back and we would literally, she'd wash her hands for a half hour, you know, and uh, we'd uh, do the antibacterial stuff. And when packages would come, we have a little foyer, we would spray those packages and not open them for two days, you know. And somebody didn't steal them in the meantime? No, 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 we did oh, inside, inside. In the foyer right. inside the apartment. You know, the um, thing that irks me the most uh-oh. are these people that, uh-oh. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. There's these people that, oh, you know, they're paying doctors to say that people died of COVID. And I'm like, yeah. you know what, listen up. Yeah. If I, I I'm, I'm, a diabetic but i'm healthy enough to run marathons so if i'm out on my jog i get mauled by a bear and they bring me to the hospital and as they're trying it's fighting to save my life and as they're adjusting my blood sugar and i die on the table guess what it's the fucking bear that killed me yeah. <laughs> that's a great green screen brian <laughs> That's a great special effect they're doing there. (laughs) Oh, boy. Hey, by the way, uh, 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 do you know I have a picture that you did on my my door over here? I can't show it to you because it's on the door. But, yeah, your dad sent me some pictures you did. 
Yeah. Where is Brian? I can't see him. You got to get her out of play mode. She's in play oh, mode right now. It, Bri yeah. Brian, Brian's the smaller of the two heads. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is fucking too. Alex he's got, he's got a little <laughs> straighter teeth, too. Yeah. He says he has your picture. So she's in play mode, you call it? Yeah, yeah. she's in hyper play mode. It's hard to yeah. get out. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I remember those days well. <laughs> well, you know, she... It, it was your first day... Of, tell Alex your first day of school today. Was it your first day of school today, Adrian? Adrian, was it your first day of school? Yeah. Hopefully Adrian. We, we have an orange... There's an orange... Big orange moon tonight because of the fires over here. Oh, oh wow. yeah. Yeah, it's, actually, it's pretty... It's cool, but it's, you know, yeah. not for a good reason. So she went to... really bright. Today was the first day of school for her. How about masks and everything? Did you wear your mask, Adrian? Yeah, okay. First grade? <laughs> no, she's in kindergarten. Okay, bye-bye. Hey, I'll fix this later. Bye. Bye. And yeah, what, she's in kindergarten. And what that, what what wait a minute. What famous painting was she just emulating? The oh, Scream. Picasso. The Scream. Scream, yeah. Oh. Scream, yeah. Yeah, and then we had uh, all three kids started school today. One's in elementary, and you know, she's in kindergarten. One in junior high and one in the high school. So it was like crazy morning today. I had a crazy day. Wow. She had class I saw and, your video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My son, you know, Simon's very shy. Yeah. And so we pulled up and it, uh, Tiffany and I were dropping off a couple of them. So but I pulled up, pulled up and all the cheerleaders are all lined up, all cheering on, cheering on everybody coming up for school. All the guys had these banners and stuff like that. And so I knew it. So I pulled right up in front of everybody. I said, honk, honk. So I was honking the horn. And and he said, so why, why, why? And then he got out. Were you in your uh, new McLaren? No, no, no. We had a few of us. I was in the Cadillac, so. Oh. You were in the Cadillac, not in the McLaren. I see. No, no. I might know the, the, the new car. Okay. What? What did she say? <laughs> no. Go, 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 go. She she's got too she much. She just said she voted for uh, somebody else other than Alex on the broadcast. Uh, no, yeah. no. She just she just said Simon was mad, that's all. So he was yeah. like, So anyway. Yeah. So we haven't heard anything on the uh on Simon the is thing. your son with the little blonde streak in his hair he's that's got pink. It's like light pink. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So he's in what? He's in. Uh... He's in. Uh, he's a sophomore. He's a sophomore. He's a sophomore. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And yeah, so, then Stephanie just goes across the street to the junior high. So it's what? Nice. What's harder to raise? I mean, and and two of your kids are by your wife through another marriage, and uh -huh. Adrian is yours. But yeah. what's what is it easier to raise a guy than it is to raise raise girls? Or, or is it vice versa? What what would you say? I don't know. I'll tell you when I'm done. Oh, okay. <laughs> How about you, Charlie? That's Charlie. Yeah. Char That's Charlie. Charlie. Charlie, what did you have, boy and girl or girl? I had two girls and a boy, and the girls were far easier than my son. Oh, wow. really? <laughs> yeah. In what respect? He got into everything. He was breaking everything. He was taking things apart. He was running around in the street and stuff. And practically tie him down. He's I a scientist see. now. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> and 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 the girls were just very what? Very good and nice. Yep. And... yep until they got to the teenage years. But <laughs> well, you know, teenage years I think must be rough for a father because the uh, hormones are kicking in. Yeah. Right? You know, and uh, the, the long the long showers. <laughs> <laughs> he used to be like me i used to take, take like a seven minute shower in bam 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 out and uh yeah they're suddenly longer <laughs> much longer imagine shower. that yes. yeah and then i like what i like walking by the bathroom and i shake the door handle <laughs> oh yeah you're so cruel he's in the middle be of trying idiot. to take care of business <laughs> you're so you just make them take longer. <laughs> You're not conserving water that way, Brian. Shame on you. Uh, yeah. I just want to scare him. How about you, Vernon? What was <clears throat> what you had? Uh, what did you have? Uh, 
what did you adopt a boy and a girl or both uh oh. we adopted a boy first and yeah. then five years later adopted a girl yeah so which one how was old, he how old are they when you adopted them? uh my son is 41 and my daughter is 36. No. yeah but i mean when how you old were they when them? you adopted oh when they adopt oh <laughs> uh, 40 and 35. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to keep the DNA going in my family. There you go. No, no, but, but how, how old were they when you no. adopted them? Uh, my son was five months old, and uh -huh. that's primarily oh. because the fa uh, father's rights had to be terminated through the courts. I see, okay. They never, got, they never got any response from the alleged father, so they had to go through the courts to terminate parental rights for I him. See. Okay. So he was five months old when we got him. Uh -huh. Our daughter, however, was two months old because... Oh, okay all parental rights were severed very quickly oh okay so uh, so uh, which one was the tougher of the two to raise uh teenage years were rough for both for both for both so i guess maybe that's that's the case you know i don't know any of this because i never had to go through any of this and and by the way uh, brian didn't know much about this either but in the last couple of years he's learned you've been on a fast track course <laughs> right yeah, the Simon and Stephanie were five and seven when I was dating uh, Tiffany. Yeah. So I saw the five and seven stuff grow up to where they are now, and then now I'm filling in all the other years with Adrian. And how old is Adrian, now, Adrian now? Now you're paying your son back for giving you a hard time by shaking the door. <laughs> how long? Yeah. Is, how long? How how old is Adrian now? She's she was f she's five now. Yeah, she's five and a half. Yeah. Five, five yeah. and a half. October isn't, she'll be. Isn't it great that when you're a kid you go, how old are you? And they go. I'm five and three quarters. Yeah. You know, yeah. today I don't go, hey, you know, how old are you, Alex? Well, I'm uh, 91 and three quarters. <laughs> I'm sorry. She's the tallest. I mean, 81. Tallest I'm 81 and three quarters. No, you, you don't, don't say look a I'm day 80. over 91. I, I don't You're know fine. why I keep saying 91. I know you say 91. 80, 81 and three quarters, uh, because you're not going to say you're 82 until the day happens. Yeah. And you may not. Oh, even yeah. oh yeah. At this point, you're just shaving points off your head. Oh yeah. You don't. You don't want to get there too fast. But when you're a kid, you want to be grown up more than you are. You know. Oh, I, I remember. I remember growing up. I couldn't wait till I was 16. Then I couldn't wait till I was 18. Then I couldn't wait till I was 21. Then after 21, I was like, well, shit. Well, gee, I can hardly wait till I'm I'm 82. I can hardly wait. Yeah. Look it's, at all that water it, you'll save by not standing in the shower, Alex. 80, yeah. It's like, what fresh hell is going to come 80, now? 81 has been such a breeze for me. Uh, uh, anyway. That's because we're here to keep you young. Thank you, everybody. Uh, it's been nice tonight. There's been a great little uh, crew here. Uh, screw anybody who thinks this was uh, a, a, a sad attempt at doing a radio program is yeah, yeah, something perfect. quantity over quality something, something. yeah yeah uh, uh thank you charlie and thank you of course to alan uh william ferguson always nice to see you there i was thinking thank about you, you today uh, mr nunn because i was i was saying i hope he calls tonight it just uh, really so and you did you must have gotten the vibes uh tony thank you all right and quit sending me those messages on Facebook. You're driving me crazy. For I don't blame you. God. The same thing with Alan. He's he wrote me. He said he's driving me nuts with all this these messages. And Brian, thank you so much. Everybody, why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, folks. That's our citizen panel, and uh, a good citizen panel it was tonight. Had a nice time. You should have a nice time with the Citizen Panel that's coming up next. It's going to be the intersection with Jack Bishop, and he will be here and using Skype with the, you call the uh, the uh, thing, GabNet Live is what you call in order to get to him on Skype. Uh, we'll see you again, uh, let's see here, tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, yeah, you know what to do. Tell her I love her, okay? And by the way, whatever you do, get vaccinated, okay? If you don't, wear a damn mask. See you later. Bye. Who was that guy?